It's time to go beyond the headlines Cause I don't put in overtime just so I can headline Okay, now it's Fox Sports, I'm live with Renee Going hard every day, sports rapping every play Different segments for your favorites Coming at you daily with positive vibes Yeah, we some game changers Basketball, football, soccer With different interviews, you never know who may pop up Listen, <laughs> only on Beyond the Headlines This is Beyond the Headlines <laughs> Only on beyond the headlines, this is beyond the headlines. <laughs> Only on beyond the headlines, this is beyond the headlines. We're Renee Washington. This week on Beyond the Headlines with Renee Washington, we've got a very special guest joining us to talk about the big three. It is the Woj of the Big Three, Oliver Maroney, also editor of the league. Oliver, welcome to the show. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. No problem. I'm happy to have you here because it allows us to get into everything that is going on around the league, especially since the season's uh, this season schedule was just released. Season four is coming up, and take us through what you've seen as the evolution of the big three from back when it was first announced and, and Ice Cube brought the idea about and, and the team brought the idea about to now as we're heading into season four. Oh, my gosh. There's been so much. I mean, I think – first back to like my first conversations with cube and jeff um and it was around how this league started and obviously yesterday uh we saw the memorial service of kobe bryant and and part of the reason this league even exists is because of him um rest in peace to him and obviously the other people in the accident but um you know cube saw kobe's 60 point performance uh right before he retired and they had already had this idea in the back of their minds of starting a, a three-on-three professional league. And um, that game kind of fueled their fire to kind of do this quicker. And uh, right after that game is when Cube and Jeff really had uh, conversations around how the business model would look, how many teams would play, et cetera. And so I think back to that moment as kind of like uh, the, the, the starting point for this league. And, you know, they get big name guys and, this this was initially kind of considered a uh, not a retirement league, but uh, it was seen as as a place where guys who had retired or who had been bounced in the NBA um, were given an, a second chance and a second opportunity. And now, obviously, you've seen the transition slowly but surely to a younger league, a more dynamic league, absolutely more competitive. And to see the triplets obviously announce that they're coming back as a full squad to see Joe Johnson, the MVP of the league, come back. Um, it's incredible. It's it's really cool to watch. And these guys are every season just just really excited and really energetic about the opportunity not only to play in the league, but to compete. And uh, that's something I think in season one, it, it was taken a little bit lightheartedly just in the sense that guys didn't really know what to expect coming in. And now the expectation is everybody is in shape, ready to go, and ready to really compete for that championship contention and, and championship spot. That's that's a lot of really good points that you bring up. And of course, talking about, you know, where it even, the, the concept and how it originated. I know there's way more in detail that we can get into. I was fortunate to be able to attend Ice Cube's panel that um, the Big Three hosted at NABJ last, last summer, and they were talking about you know, the bringing about of the big three and how it was born and the ideas that really made up this league. And as you talk about what was originally some looked at as a retirement league, it is not that. You know, you talk about reigning MVP Joe Johnson returning. The news just broke that he's coming back to the league. He was invited back into play with the Pistons following last season. I mean, it's it's more than just a retirement league. It's innovative. It's paving the way. It's, it's changing basketball. And now we even hear... Um, as of as of recently with the announcement earlier this winter about Fireball 3 and the concept that making the big three and, and everything it embodies into its own entity and own sport of basketball being the Fireball 3. So, I mean, talk to me. You're you're working on, on the inside. You know, I'm only I only have an outside perspective. But what you see from the way that it is really changing the game of not only basketball, but three on three basketball to be its own entity, just like in. In soccer, we have futsal and, and outdoor soccer. We have different types of soccer. You know, across sports, there's different types of competition. But you're really breaking glass ceilings, so to speak, on how you approach three-on-three basketball. 
Yeah, I think what we noticed is people tied our game to like the NBA or tied it to FIBA or tied it to something else, and it just wasn't that. And so like through the past two, three summers, you see kids start to say like, oh, it's fireball or oh, it's it's lit or whatever, like as the kids say. But we heard a lot of terms like fireball and uh, that resonated with Cube, obviously. It resonated with Jeff, our other co-founder. And that's really how this kind of started is just fans watching the game and realizing that it wasn't necessarily your FIBA three on three. It wasn't the NBA. And ultimately, like our league is different. And, you know, to create separation from those things, we felt it was really important to change the name of what we play, name the name of the game of what we play and to make it our own again. So we have the bring the fire rule that comes with that. Obviously, a, a coach or a team can challenge a call and um, the, the, the subsequent players that are involved in that call or play go one on one against each other. Um, the, the ball is going to be changed to a red color. So you're going to see that as well. I, I think ultimately, you know, if you see Cube's success in his career and what he's done as not only a, an actor, as a musician, as an artist, uh, he's always been the first to do a lot of things and he's always been innovative in those strategies and those ways. And I think with the big three, it's, it's the same thing. Uh, it's almost like if you're not growing or improving, what are you doing? So uh, we feel the same way. We always have to be innovative. We always have to be changing um, and, and growing, not just changing for the sake of change, but, but growing with that. And so um, right. I think that's just part of the evolution and part of the innovation and growth in, in what we've seen. And now, since we do have such a fan base and, you know, we do sell out a lot of these arenas, this is an opportunity for us to say, hey, this is our own thing. Similar to what MMA and, and UFC, it, you know, kind of went into. That, mm -hmm. That's kind of what we're looking at as well and saying, hey, this is an opportunity for us. And, and, and it really separates us from the rest. And that's not saying we don't like the NBA. We don't like other leagues. We don't like other sports. It's just to say our game is different and, it, and they really can't really be compared. Um, that, that's what it's there for. Yeah, and some and you talk about um, you know being a league that is being that is innovative and something else uh, off well that is still on the court. But aside from players that you have in the league, as you talk about Joe Johnson and Amari Stoudemire and Mike Bibby, there are there's an innovation in the in the people that are in charge, and that is something that I love about the league. And you know this, what Ice Cube and Jeff have been able to bring to the table to bring in so many different sports masterminds, so many different decorated um, player, former players like Dr. J and Gary Payton, like having people like Amy Trask, Nancy Lieberman, Lisa Leslie in head coaching positions, in high, you know, high ranking positions on the board, which is something that as we have been seeing across all sports and, and our other guest this week on the show is talking about the U.S. women's national team for soccer. We we're seeing women, you know, moving up the ranks and getting these positions of power. So that diversity piece, you know, not only just by race, but by gender as well, to have Lisa Leslie and Nancy Lieberman, Amy, Amy Trask, three that, of the first names that come to mind, you know, at the forefront. This league is, is doing so much for change in, in all sports, and you're a part of that, and you get to see those conversations come about. I mean, t talk to us about that diversity piece and really helping to promote inclusion in all aspects. I mean, Cube and Jeff will be the first to tell you the way they operate is who's the best for the job. Right. There isn't any conversation around gender. Like that just isn't a, isn't a conversation. It shouldn't be. And I agree with those values. And part of the reason I'm with the league is because of that. I, I agree mm -hmm. with their strategy. I agree with their approach. I think it's smart. And honestly, I think it's the difference between right and wrong. This isn't like, uh, uh, to me, uh, the, the gender debate or the argument on who should get what job uh, isn't um, a debate up for discussion. It's you're right or you're wrong in this situation. And, and to me, they're doing right. They're, they're doing what's morally and ethically right and, and what should be done in every workplace. And it's not, unfortunately. And so I think when you talk about Cube and Jeff, they are very, very vital to this whole process. They're the ones who make these decisions and these calls. And as they'll tell you just as much as I will, um, you know, like Nancy Lieberman was the most qualified person for the coaching gig. That's why she got it. It wasn't about, 
anything else. And it's funny because I talked to, it's not funny, but when I talked to players about it, uh, like Corey Maggette or Quentin Richardson or these guys, and you say, hey, when you were first approached about Nancy Lieberman coaching, what were your thoughts? And they said, Hall of Famer, uh, Lady <laughs> Magic, like sign me up right now. It wasn't even a question. And that's how everybody in the league operates. And that's what I find so unique and so different is everybody is not, closed-minded they're very open-minded and they want the best person to get the, the position they want to see people succeed it, whether you're you know african-american white uh it doesn't matter it, race uh gender um any of the sorts like that just isn't a conversation um and, and it's funny because i i look at it a little bit it, it's hard to have these discussions without saying it's it's almost a little bit disrespectful to have them, but you have to have them in order to change that, right? Exactly. So it's it's really difficult to kind of move the needle when you know you see people say, "Oh, Lisa Leslie, what is it like coaching men?" And and Lisa's like, "I, I don't know how to answer that. I'm just coaching. Yeah. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, and I think I'm the best for the job. That's it." So it's it, it's it's a tough conversation to have in a lot of ways, but for me. I love being a part of a league that that acts that way about it, that that knows that this is the right thing to do. And ultimately, it leads to success. I mean, we've seen it. It's no doubt about it. Doesn't matter if you're male or female. Lisa Leslie and Nancy Lieberman are back to back coaches of the year, back to back champions. And they're there for a reason because they're the best at what they do. So mm -hmm. it doesn't, doesn't matter who you are, where you come from. And I think that's really important. That's something Cube always stresses and is stressed throughout his life and through work. You know, I think uh, it's funny. I, I look back to the movie. I think it's Anaconda, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> it's not it's not a good movie. Uh, I mean, it, look, it, it, it's, a, it's, it, it's a little bit interesting. Let's yeah, put it that way. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> but 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 I, I look back and I, I heard this interview with Cube and he said, the only reason I did that movie is because I wanted to break a stereotype. And in the script, they said, uh, I think he says that that, that he wasn't going to die. And, and he's like, that's the reason I was in the movie. It breaks a stereotype. This is what it should be about. And when they sent me that script, you know, I wasn't necessarily blown away by it. But at the same time, if they're going to if they're going to break a stereotype and I'm going to be able to be that founding figure on, on those sort of those sort of discussions and aspects, I'm in. And that's what I think is so unique and genuine about what this is and, and, and what what the league represents, is it represents um, innovation for the good and, and change for the good. And um, like I said, we don't really have these discussions internally. It's it's only when we're asked by like media members mm -hmm. uh, that we have these discussions because it's just not, not even a thought in our mind. Our, our, our thoughts are, who's the best to do this position? And, and let's go with that. I love that. I love that. That's such a good point. I didn't even think, wow, I remember watching Anaconda and thinking that um, and being like, wow, finally, the black the black person, someone that's black lives. And it is Ice Cube, of course, so you can't kill him off. But I just it's like <laughs> it, it's incredible to see the as you mentioned, on the inside, that's the norm for the big three. Like you are breaking stereotypes. You are as a male league that has women at the forefront instead of what we see in a lot of other sports that are trying to trying to get to that point, the benefit of having this this new innovative league that's in season four is you can now do things the right way as you talk about. And I know this over the last couple of months, I've been seeing so many incredible announcements as we talk about whether it's Joe Johnson returning or the combine and draft dates being announced. Also, the age limit, the minimum age for the league lowering to 22, which is phenomenal, as we talk about not being a retirement league. I mean, this is a league that is absolutely without that moving in the right direction. So the yeah. schedule was recently announced, which is partly why I wanted to bring you on and talk about it. And I'm excited because you guys are going to be right back again in the same city as NABJ this summer. So I'm looking forward to it when you guys are there in we D.C. Go. <laughs> um, but it wasn't by accident. <laughs> oh no, that and that's what I was like when that when that came out. Everyone was like, "Is that a coincidence?" And I'm like, "Absolutely not. This is this is the big three we're talking about. Like, there are no coincidences. Everything is planned. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest." So, I mean, looking at the cities and and the the demographic, I mean, the areas, excuse me, that you guys are going to be traveling to. How did you know? What's your thought on picking those cities? I I don't even know how you go about 
with so many fans around the country. Obviously, you try to hit those the major markets like New York, like D.C., but, you know, Miami being big too, Chicago, Memphis. It's just, I don't, I don't even know if I'd be able to pick 10, 10 major cities to get to. I have no idea. But you're yeah, it's a huge process. The ones that now. Yeah, it, it's a big process. I'm not really fully involved in it. Um, right. You know, you know the the kind of internal discussions we have on it are, are pretty slim. I mean, we all discuss things, but I think really when you look at where the cities are, they're based in places that people want us in and have been asking for. Like Memphis and I think Jeff Quatnitz, our co-founder, tweeted out the day before the announcements. He said Memphis has been like the highest rated TV market for the big three since its inception. And so we felt a need to go there because of that. Um, you know, DC obviously has been a place we've wanted to go for years. And when, you know, NABJ gets announced to go there, uh, that was earmarked. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I think that was something that Cube and Jeff absolutely wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And, and there was a reason for it, not only just to go to DC and bring guys like Gilbert Arenas back, but yeah. also to have, you know, NABJ there and to be able to possibly look at things down the line with you guys. Um, it's very important to them, you know, and, and they saw the value in it last year when we went to Miami and um, they believe in it. Uh, they they want to to give that opportunity to people and to have them be able to come out to games and and see it live and see it in person. And they, they feel it's important. So I think ultimately uh, when we when we figure out the cities, it's based on, you know, the market, how they look at it, how if they want it. And then secondly, the arenas, you know, there's a lot of I- I- inner workings with the arenas that you have to work out in advance, um, you know, like sponsors, whether they work, things of that nature. So there's a lot more behind the scenes that has to happen in order for us to really uh, make things make things um, feasible, obviously, in a business standpoint, financially and then also bringing it to the places that fans want it. So it is a lot that's involved. It's not like one thing that I can pinpoint and say, hey, this is the reason why. And people who are upset and disappointed, we understand, you know, but we also have to have these tough conversations about, you know, where we want to go, how many times we've been to a certain city, how many times we've missed a certain city that we've meant to go to, and we just we just haven't gotten a deal done with the arena. So all of that is taken into consideration and, nothing's off limits for us. It's just, it's, it's a lot of it is around, you know, the business model and and if it makes sense. Yeah, no, that, that completely makes sense. And I know, you know, Miami last year, that was my first time ever, well, A, going to American Airlines Arena, which in itself was a cool experience, but also to, to see the big three in action in person, you know, the league has been to Philly, but I was unable to go. So personally, I know as a fan, you know, taking my media hat off, it was incredible to watch it in person. And it was it was a, a very, you know, I as I watched the All-Star game, ironically, uh, you know, when NBA All-Star weekend just passed, yeah, I was like, oh, wow, I do see, I see so many similarities when I watch the All-Star game. And I'm like, wow, that reminds me a lot of what I saw in the Big Three. You know, that the way that each, the way that it's formatted, the way that it's just like, it's so unique to any experience you get. And I'm not just going to say it to an NBA game, but any other sporting event. You know, any other game you go to in person, the big three brings something very different and very exciting. And and even the fact that I felt like for Jeff Quantinance and Ice Cube, I've act I feel like you guys are much more approachable and much more easy like easier to reach, even yourself. But you know, unlike other leagues, it might be a little bit more difficult to have these conversations, to get feedback, for fans to get feedback to the league, to be able to, you know, as you talk about with Memphis being a spot fans were, were asking for the big three to come to and you made it happen. You know, I, I don't know how many other leagues are able to provide that experience to fans where they can feel like their voice is heard. And I know for me, when I was at the game, I was like, this feels much more personable than, than any, you know, a lot of events that I've gone to across other sports. So what can we expect this upcoming season? You know, as we're moving forward, as you talk about year four, you know, all the, all the, the, the personalities and talents that are involved in the league I'm excited to get to go to D.C. in July and check things out. But what can fans, you know, and 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 everybody else expect from the big three as we get into year four, into the big four? <laughs> there you go. Big four, big three. Uh, it's going to be fun. I mean, it's exciting. Look, I, I'm excited for the season to begin. I think 
this season, overall seasons, and it's probably very clear to 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 have evidence to back this up. But uh, this season, overall, other seasons, it's going to be more competitive. I think every team understands going in what needs to be what needs to be done. I mean, I even know a lot of our guys working out in LA together. A lot of our guys working out in Atlanta together. That's where a lot of them are based, and okay. they're they've already started working out. They they do year round stuff most of the time. Um, you see guys like Rashard Lewis doing boxing, uh, hooping, trying to get everything he can in just before the season starts and, and being prepped and being ready. And that that's ultimately uh, what I think really impacts the league is the product on the floor. And in seasons past, I think we've had we've had some situations where you have guys that aren't necessarily ready to go week one, game one. And I don't think that's going to be the case this year. And I am, you know, I look at some of the other expectations. I mean, I'm very excited about this bring the fire rule. I've, I've, I've seen a lot of rule implications done um, in the league since its inception. And I think this one kind of tops them all. Um, if it's, if it, if it looks right on camera and it looks right in the games, this is going to be something that definitely changes the sport and something that I think you'll see all-star games in the future, maybe go to, I mean, um, having a one-on-one scenario is something that everybody's always dreamed of seeing. I mean, I, I, I love to think about watching AI and Kobe go at it one-on-one or watching, uh, Michael Jordan and LeBron go one-on-one or Kevin Durant and LeBron, you know, you could go down the list of guys, but I always look at that and say, man, I would love to see that in a game. And I think for the first time ever, we're going to see that. And you know, this isn't LeBron, this isn't MJ, but, we're going to see possibly a, a Frank Nitty versus Will Bynum. We're going to see a Joe Johnson versus Rashard Lewis or a Joe Johnson versus Steven Jackson. That's going to be really interesting to watch and see. And that, to me, is the most exciting part this season for, for me. And then also just going to new cities. We're going to almost six, I think it's six new cities this year. It's going to be exciting for, for those fan bases to be able to come out to watch this and uh, to be able to, to, to see what we're all about. And hopefully... You know, the crowds are there and the people are there and supporting this league. And um, we see it grow and improve just like we did last season. I'm definitely looking forward to the bring the fire rule. And that's something that I know a lot of people, especially on social media, have been bringing up the debate of whether or not one on one should be brought to the NBA All-Star weekend or somehow be implemented into basketball. So, of course, the big three is bringing it out. So I'm excited for that and just looking forward to the season. Where can our listeners follow you on social media to keep up with all your big three coverage. Absolutely. They can follow me at Omeroni big three on all social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok now. Thank you. Oh, I'm, wow. I'm, I'm joining the TikTok movement. I'm not dancing or doing any renegade things or whatever, but, uh, maybe I'll try a few when I, when I get those things down, I'm not, I'm not much of a dancer and, uh, Big three players can attest to that because I've been brought out every once in a while and it doesn't uh, it doesn't really turn out too well for me. Yeah, but that's what makes it fun. It doesn't always have to be great <laughs> dancing. It could be you're having fun being an awful dancer and that's just there we go. <laughs> there we go. You've got it down. But yes, Omaroni Big Three wherever you wherever you social media wherever you use your social media, I'm there. And obviously, at the Big Three is our main account, and you can follow us there for all news updates and schedule and tickets and things like that but uh thanks again for having me on no it was it was a pleasure oh no problem thank you for joining the show i'm looking forward to seeing the big three in dc july 11th and i'm excited to see all the new things that are coming about for 2020 so thank you for joining beyond the headlines with renee washington it's been a pleasure having you on the show thanks again for having me i appreciate it